The mid-morning train from Leeds to Carlisle runs into Skipton's Grade 2 listed station. Drivers of diesel units were at this time still dressed as for steam work. On the left, Skipton's steam shed seems to have been closed. The first line along here continued straight ahead to Cold and Lancashire. It would close in 1970. We've turned right onto the line opened in 1849 by the North Western Railway, often referred to as the Little North Western, to distinguish it from the London and North Western. The aqueduct carrying the Leeds and Liverpool Canal across the River Eyre. The site of Belbusk for Malham Station. Malham Village is four miles away. Converging from the left, a freight on the line from Blackburn via Clitheroe. Did our driver deliberately stop short to aid our filming? Helifield station buildings and canopies have been extensively restored in recent years. After taking water, the freight will be following us. The Little North Western built this as a cross-country route to Lancaster, opening throughout in 1850, but after the 1871 takeover by the Midland Railway, their expansion plans turned to the lucrative traffic to Scotland. We are approaching Settle Junction, the point from which their ambitious route to Scotland was to start. On our right, remains of Settle's short-lived first station. Lancaster on the left, Carlisle and Scotland on the right. Already our climb towards the High Pennines is apparent. From Settle Junction, the 15 miles to Blee Moor Tunnel seldom climb at less than one in a hundred. Arduous for steam-hauled heavy freight and express trains, enginemen called it the long drag. This is actually the third Settle station. The second, on the Lancaster line, was renamed Giggleswick, although the settlement of that name lies close on the west side of this line. Stainforth Quarry, looming ahead, was served by extensive sidings. Taitlands, or Stainforth Tunnel, only 120 yards long. This is the valley of the still small River Ribble, which the line crosses three times within a mile. Helwith Bridge signal box controlled access to Limeworks sidings. On our right, Penny Ghent rises to over 2,270 feet. Sidings for another lime works at Horton in Ribblesdale. The station serves a very scattered community, but is popular with ramblers. Empty coal wagons return south. In the 21st century, many loaded block trains of coal imported via Hunterston in Scotland pass this way to the Yorkshire power stations. In the 1960s and 70s, railway management made great efforts for authority to close this route, but thanks to intense public pressure, it has remained open to become an invaluable relief to the West Coast main line. Like most intermediate stations, Ribble Head closed in 1970. When with some others it reopened in 1986, the demolished down platform had to be replaced. Ribble Head Viaduct across treacherous Batty Moss took five years to build. 440 yards long, 24 arches, 104 feet high. A large temporary village housed the navvies in this wild place. In recent years the track has been singled to reduce the strain on the viaduct. Blee Moor, with loops for freights to stop and take water and to be overtaken by expresses. Next, the almost one and a half miles of Blee Moor Tunnel, a less visible monumental work. The long climb is behind us now as we enter Dentdale. Dent Head Signal Box is named after the nearby farm. Crossing Artem Gill Viaduct of 11 arches.
Four miles from the tiny village of the same name stands Dent Station, at 1150 feet, the highest in England. Rise Hill Tunnel, just over 1,200 yards long. The Midland Railway hauled its expresses with quite small engines, attaching a second or pilot engine for the steeper sections, such as we have just climbed. Britain's highest water troughs for the replenishment of steam locomotive supplies, sited on a rare length of level track. The railway community of Garsdale, formerly Hawes Junction, start of the line through Wensleydale. Express pilot engines would be detached and turned here before returning to their home shed. The trace of the line to Hawes. After crossing Moorcock Viaduct, we come to the short Moorcock Tunnel, both named after the nearby Moorcock Inn. Lunds Viaduct with Wild Boar Fell beyond. British Railway's first generation diesel multiple units came in as many as 16 different types from four different firms and two of BR's workshops. They were equipped with the vacuum brake rather than the more efficient compressed air system to be able to haul additional vans or wagons, but seldom did. We now approach A's Gill signal box at 1169 feet, the summit of the line. The descent, at first through the area known as Malastang Common, is also at one in a hundred. This terrain is not suitable for arable farming, raising the hardier breeds of sheep and seasonal cattle fattening, plus breeding game birds are the main activities. Malastang Signal Box Hauled by a Class 45 locomotive, the Thames Clyde Express, last remaining through train from Glasgow via Dumfries, Carlisle, Leeds, Sheffield and Leicester to London St Pancras. Below, the Eden Valley's more gentle scenery opens out. This, the Midlands Kirby Stephen station, at nearly two miles, is further from the village than the other on the Stainmore line. The North Eastern's T-Bay branch from the Stainmore line passed below this Smardale viaduct. Crosby Garrett Tunnel and the village seen from Crosby Garrett Viaduct. Site of the village station closed in 1952 and its signal box now out of use. The 570-yard Helm Tunnel. Ormside Station, closed in 1952. The express dairy here at Appleby, conveniently sited for dispatch by rail. Appleby, the only station between Settle and Carlisle to remain open when the local trains were withdrawn between 1970 and 1986. The double track connection to the North Eastern's line, at filming still in use to serve the military at Warcop. Remains of the North Eastern Railway's line towards Eden Valley Junction and Penrith from Kirby Stephen East and Warcop. Long Martin, closed in 1970 and not reopened. A distant view westwards to the Lakeland Fells. The aerial ropeway connects mines to the works of British gypsum at Kirby Thor. 
In recent years, these works also receive gypsum by rail from the Yorkshire power stations. It's a byproduct of the smoke desulphurisation process. Newbegin also closed in 1970 and not reopened. The buildings became a private house. Culgaith, with buildings of a different style, closed in 1970 and remains so. The River Eden, flanked by lush pastures. Langworthby, this station was reopened in 1986. It now houses a restaurant and coffee shop. Stania Class 5 on empty mineral wagons. Little Salkeld, another which has remained closed. Long Meg sidings for nearby gypsum mines. The River Eden will be on our east side beyond here. Well sighted for the village, Lazenby, which did reopen in 1986. Armourthwaite Viaduct Armourthwaite Station, which also reopened, the last such before Carlisle. Drybeck Viaduct Low house level crossing, one of only two on the entire Settle and Carlisle. This was Howe and Co's sidings. The signal box remains today as the interface to Carlisle's newest control centre. The Midland Railway's most northerly extremity was here at Petrol Bridge Junction, where they joined the North Eastern's route from Newcastle. London Road Junction, start of goods lines avoiding the main station. We climb up beside the West Coast main line, past the power signal box since replaced, to terminate in Bay Platform 6, originally used by the North Eastern's trains from Newcastle.